Hello and welcome to Newer Collective Podcasts and I am joined today with Paul McMahon who is our feature artist of the month and he is doing our November, December podcast series um, for the Newer Collective feature artists and through this campaign what we're doing is we are showcasing his work, his practice, learning a little bit more about him, giving us a little bit more of an insight into his artistic world. So joined with us, we have Paul. Paul, welcome to the New Collective podcast. Once again, we've had you for a really special talk with Luke Hickey recently talking about mental health. But today we're talking about you and we're talking about um, all about your work and all about your practice. So welcome, Paul. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Eamon. It's nice to talk to you. Nice to see you again. Good, good. I'm not really good at these things, Eamon, now, so um, I hope everything uh, goes okay. Absolutely. Well, we'll guide you through it and we'll ask you loads of questions. So you'll you'll never be short for a word. You're never short for a word anyway, Paul. You always have something to say. So we're, we're delighted to have you My on. My wife says that. We love a good talker. So um, hopefully we'll have a really cool um, organic conversation that will come through this. And we have loads to discuss anyway, because your work is so interesting. Your story is so interesting. So we should we should be a piece of cake. So maybe we'll start with that, Paul. Paul, tell us when you were growing up as a child, were you interested in art? Yeah, always. Um, It's funny, I, I was extremely lucky in my teens, sort of 13, 14, 15, we had a, uh, a Spanish uh, friend whose son wanted to come to Ireland uh, and learn English. And he stayed with us three summers and I went back to their home for two or three months at a time. And they were extremely interested in, uh, in the arts. Um, they taught me an awful lot, even at that age. Uh, they took me to the Prado and they explained all the great masters and the Goyas and we went to galleries and uh, they were very interested in art and, and I, I think it instilled a passion in me uh, at the time, which has stayed with me my whole life. Uh, my dad was also an architect uh, who was very interested in art and I had two cousins who were professional artists, so this is sort of art in the family, if you want to call it. I studied art at school. I went to a a boarding school and we had a great art teacher there who happened to be a neighbor of ours outside of school. Um, And she she was a wonderful, uh, Mrs. Byrne, she was a wonderful teacher. And she allowed you to express and and, and let your feelings flow instead of teaching you, you must do this and you must do that or do this and do that. So it was a very Um, creative process in in the classroom as well. It was very creative. Uh, When I left school, I went to Limerick College of Art for a year or two, didn't you know, get any uh, diplomas, degrees or anything. I just went, Jack Donovan was teaching there at the time and Charlie Harper. And I was very influenced by their work as well. In my early 20s, I opened a business in Limerick. Um, I then, in my late 20s, moved to America, to Arizona, to the desert for four or five years. Wow. Then back to England. So I've been away from Ireland for, gosh, over 35 years now. Wow. So even from like even from the get go, from day one, you were influenced influenced by many different cultures and different sides of things. So I, you've obviously got a love for for travel um, and and discovery. So from but obviously that was potentially influenced by the exchanges that you had when you were younger in your teens, going to to the likes of Madrid, where you saw the Prado and had your eyes were open to to great art from the yeah, beginning. Completely, yeah. Which is amazing. It's a ama- an amazing thing to have um, at at that age. And from from your from your standpoint, um, having that foundation is is amazing. Um, so when you were before we kind of skip into your your adult years, let's go back a little bit. Just tell me, was what what were you making at that point? What what sort of artwork were you making in the classroom or or even outside the classroom? Um, can you remember? Yeah, I, I I can. I can remember even the 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 uh, painting or drawings that I did for my leaving cert. Mm. Uh, in art. Um, it was very abstract, a lot of it. A lot of it was, friends used to call it doodling, mm. but on a large scale. Um, and I, I'm a very fidgety character, you know, um, I'm, I'm anxious a lot of the time. Mm. And I always like to be just doing something. Um, I started to paint mostly in kind of watercolors 
you know, around the 18, 19 mark. Mm. Um, my father was always doing drawings. In those days, there was no CAD systems and everything else. And he was designing quite large buildings and he was doing hand-drawn um, perspectives of these buildings. And I was thought that process was really interesting. It was a bit clinical compared to what I do now. It was very architectural and it, it's... Um, the size. You know, the size of what he was doing. But he had little... And it's very interesting, some of my paintings, you see some figures which are just you know, around a very sleek, if you like, um, mm. aspect. But he used to draw little squiggles into his painting, into his drawings, into his perspectives to, to show that there are people just walking by the building. And it's very simple, just you know, a little squiggle. Mm. And that still comes. Even my, my uh, family and my wife says, gosh, your dad used to do stuff like that. So I guess subconsciously there was always something there yes both of us like to go and see art and he was a great man he liked sculpture and paintings even when he was in college yeah it is, but it's it's amazing that you've had that influence you know and that uh, there's a lot of households especially in ireland where a lot of that sort of um, creativity wouldn't have been as encouraged or advocated and it's great mm -hmm. that you were in that in that environment to nurture your artistic practice and to nurture your the foundation level of your your art your art career um, and then you went traveling and after after opening up businesses and when when you were in Arizona were you making art then or was it, you, you weren't no, nothing I mean I, I think that's when my life changed dramatically mm. um, you know I went to Arizona I was living in the desert which I was very grateful I was able to bring my two kids and my wife out there to show them the Grand Canyon and the great Colorado River and the desert and everything else. And there's an extremely stark beauty about it, which I've never forgotten. Um, I have done some paintings and when I look at them, I said they were definitely in influenced by the colors in Arizona, mm. you know, the sunsets, the sunrises, which were absolutely magnificent. Mm. And the juxtaposition, you know, when the sun goes down behind what they call the black mountains and they do turn black. Mm. Um, so you have that, um, silhouette of the mountains behind you, but you've huge while the sun is still on the river or on, on the desert itself. You have these amazing colors coming out behind the black or in front of the black, I should say. Mm, wow. Um, but I didn't paint. Uh, I was too busy, Eamon. Mm. Too busy having a good time, some would say. But, uh, um, I didn't. And when I came back to England, uh, I was working in London. I went up for a contract in Staffordshire very beautiful place called Leek in Staffordshire, right at the end of the Pennines. Mm. Um, beautiful, beautiful countryside. Uh, but, you know, I met Annabelle, we got married, with kids, businesses uh, to run, and I just didn't paint. Mm. I just didn't paint for many, many years until I, I kind of retired five years ago. So is that when you took up the paintbrush again, just five years? Yeah, very much so. Uh, my mother-in-law, who lived behind us in, in Staffordshire, we built a house for her behind our own. Um, she was a sort of an amateur artist. She dabbled and she liked it. And unfortunately, when she passed away, we were clearing out her belongings. Mm -hmm. And I found, fortunately for me, uh, a lot of oil paints, a lot of brushes, easels, canvases, you know, bits and pieces. And I said, well, you know, I'm going I'm to do this again. Uh, so I started drawing, and but when I moved back to Ireland, that's when the, the, the big thing came about, you know. Yeah. What a wonderful trigger, though, to bring you back into it. Um, yeah, to, yeah, fabulous. Yeah, and so you're, you're now making for five years, and have you seen an evolution of your work from, from when you started back to, to now? Have you seen changes happen? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think... If you like, the concept of my, my, my paintings have remained pretty much the same. Mm. They're very much, um, a lot of them are spur of the moment. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll take a canvas and, and, and I'll put paint on it with some kind of an idea of what I want to do. But 95% of the time, it completely changes. Mm -hmm. The brush strokes, actually, and that's why I say to paint people when they say, well, I've, I've got a bit of a block at the moment and I can't, you know, get into it. And I think I said it to Luke during our podcast is just put some paint on the canvas. Yeah. And take it from there. Yeah. Just and it doesn't matter, you know, what the end product is. At least you're you're getting getting in there. Yeah. What uh, I have learned yeah. since I come back to Ireland is because I have more time on my hands now, 
is the technique of what I'm doing, particularly at the moment, funnily enough, mm. is changing dramatically. And are you open to that? Are you open to learning different ways of, of applying processing or different techniques? It's exactly what I want to do. Mm. I do not want to be stuck in a rut where I'm painting the same thing. Not the same thing, but painting in the same way all the time. I go through periods where I'll take primary colours and that's all I'll paint with. And mm. I won't even mix them particularly. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll just paint, you know, very bright, vibrant primary colour paintings. Mm. Um, I'm changing, that's, for some reason that's changed. I think it's because I've been to a lot of galleries and seen a lot of art. I have a, a first cousin, Brian McMahon, who's a professional painting painter and uh, I was at an exhibition of his even last Saturday and they're truly magnificent. I mean, these paintings are, are exquisite, mm. but his technique is, is so um, extreme, I think mm -hmm. is the word I'd use. He layers paint on, on, but the images are magnificent and the colors are magnificent. So, so I might call it uh, uh, copying perhaps or plagiarism, but you know, influences are influences. Yeah. No, absolutely. I would so, never, so I've never started layering. That. Things. Yeah, I'd never refer that to as a, as a plagiarized image or anything like that. I think we inspiration comes from many sources and it comes from our experiences and from our environmental factors. And it comes from, from different things that we see, different paintings that we see, different artworks and everything, political uh, readings that we might look at in the press or like, you know, there's, there's so much that influences our ideas and what we put on the canvas that um, you and it going to experience something in an exhibition and taking mm -hmm. on how it was done or investigating the practice or the application or anything that they've done um, to, to create what they've created is, is just curiosity. And you'll, you won't be able to recreate that specifically again. No, ever. no, no, There's no, I've tried and I can't. But the thing is, the greatest thing about it is that you'll make it your way. Um, you'll take on what you feel you like from it or what you think you want to, to reinvent uh, yeah. to make that again. But it will well, well, that's more. it. And, and I think, you know, just going back to your question there, I think when I moved to Ireland, I, I, all my family live in Limerick and we mm -hmm. had a, my parents had a summer home in, on the coast in Kilkee in West Clare. And when my mom passed away, my dad passed away, we sold that house and Annabelle said, look, Carrigo Holt is really beautiful. It's a small little village. Mm -hmm. um, it's on the mouth, almost on the mouth of the estuary, not far from New Head Lighthouse. Um, I was very fortunate that there's a wonderful gallery there, Kilbaha Gallery. Mm. by uh, Ailish and Liz, two wonderful uh, patrons of the arts as well as gallery owners. Um, and they saw one or two of my paintings, which I never, by the way, I never thought I would ever actually sell one. Never even thought about you know, going through that process of selling one. Mm. But they thought there was something to them and they took some and they sold some and they've been a great influence in, in uh, boosting my... Uh, Good, boosting you know, the way I, I look at art and mm. the way um, that I should never be afraid of it. I suffer from this imposter syndrome that most people do actually, I think. Um, and they said, no, no, Paul, it's really, it's really good. You know, they, they wouldn't take their, they, what they say is they wouldn't take the stuff unless they liked it. And they have souls, which is very gratifying when you, you know, when you sell a mm -hmm. painting. I sold one yesterday to a woman in Ennis. And um, it's fantastic yeah. to know that, you know, I, I do think about, they're like little babies to me. And I say, gosh, that's hanging in somebody's wall in London or in Dublin or in Limerick or in Clare or Ennis, wherever it might be. And they're looking at that and their children will be looking at it and their yeah. grandchildren might be looking at it. So, wow, there's, there's a legacy in it. There is. Yeah. Which I yeah. never thought I'd have. There's a piece of you there in their space and their lives. Yeah. Uh, and it's almost like you're, it, it is hard to let go. There are paintings that I've done before and I'm like, no, I can't, I can't, just can't let go of that painting. It's too much. There's too much in it of me. Or perhaps the painting is just something that I was really proud of. But then I suppose like you just need to let go of your own pride, really, don't you? And just let it out. Um, did you keep any, do you keep some of your own? I have a painting. Um, I did it in 2015 um, and it's an oil painting that's kind of based on purgatory um, and it, 
it's something I don't know. I I could never re. I've tried to kind of do iterations of it and have struggled to do it. Um, and for that reason, it's 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 a, a massive stage. It's, it was like a massive transition for me in my own life as well. So, um, I I don't think I could ever let go of it. Um, yeah, that's interesting because I did a very small painting. It's only eight by eight, uh, but I'd been reading or um, getting back in touch with, you know, some of the great Irish writers and I was reading um, Beckett's, you know, Waiting for Goddard. Yes. And there was a great inspiration. It just, just struck me. It's the most extraordinary play, I think. Oh, it is. It's brilliant. Um, um, and I did a little painting of it and it's by far, it's only eight by eight. And it's called Waiting for Gado. And I put it in my exhibition, I had an exhibition recently, and mm -hmm. it didn't sell. Yeah. And I said to Annabel, I said, actually, when I put it in the exhibition, I said, sorry, I did that. Yeah. And I'm going to keep that one because it mm -hmm. means something to me. You know? yeah. um, but that's, yeah, apart from that. I think it's an interesting question about scale, though. We feel that sometimes it needs to be big and massive and uh, it needs to have an impression because of its scale. But uh, and sometimes the, the smaller paintings have an, a much more intimate relationship between the artist and the painter, but also the viewer and the painting, because you have to really engage with it to see what's happening. You have to go to it. You have to you have to get up close and personal to it. And sometimes when you're making at that scale, it's, there's a lot more restrictions in the fact that there's a smaller scale of a canvas. And so there's a, a lot more room to go wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But, but it's-, it's I, do, I do, I do, I'm, I'm saying that, I mean, again, going back, I have time on my hands now, which definitely makes it. Mm. So I, I end I, that I could, I could, well, <laughs> yeah, the other side of that coin is, are getting older and older. Um, but I have time to read and I have time to reacquaint myself with, with you know, some literary works. And uh, my uncle had a great influence. He, he was very much involved in, in reintroducing Irish music, traditional Irish music back into the country from the 50s onwards. And he was a great stalwart for that. He was a great patron of the arts and he was a great friend of Seamus Heaney, yeah. uh, who gave the eulogy at his funeral actually. Oh wow, and, um, and 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 that kind of thing. So, I like I like reading that, and I like reading poetry, and I like reading the, old, the Irish poetry. Eights, and I love uh, Patrick Kavner, and mm. I, I like reading. Um, I have a great fascination with Brendan Behan, mm -hmm. um, and and you know I I love reading all that stuff, and that's. I think at the moment where I'm getting a little bit of influence from, mm -hmm. but moving to the West Coast has definitely changed yeah. me as a person. And I think indirectly then what I'm producing. And that's an ongoing pro process. I think that you have a photograph of me at Kerry Behold Castle. Um, I, I think Annabelle sent it earlier on. And I was there and I was thinking, gosh, you know, it was actually, believe it or not, uh, it was the McMahon's Castle back in the 1500s. And my younger son in particular gets great joy out of it. He thinks, now, could we you know, get squatters' rights, move into it or something, <laughs> you know, and, and redevelop it or something. <laughs> but, but there's a great history of, uh, for, for the McMahon clan in, in West Clare. Mm -hmm. um, and the sheer beauty of it, Amy, you know, and, and, and interestingly, I almost prefer it in winter. Yeah. Because the energy is absolutely extraordinary. The colors, the sky, uh, the mountains looking across the estuaries, just just stunning, stunning. There's a, but I do I do find that my you were talking about styles of painting. I actually started a painting yesterday, which is almost like a Mondrian painting. Yeah. So completely out of my comfort zone, uh, completely different, linear, you know, defined colors, defined spaces compared to what I normally do, which is. You know, I, I probably overpaint, mm. um, but I've decided to do that as a to sort of teach myself to be a little bit less uh, aggravated, even mm -hmm. you know, with the brush. Yeah, and it is a good lesson. It is no, it is a good yeah. lesson. Yeah. It's good to go to both extremes, both so extremes that you can find yeah. within the extreme what you feel 
is your happy place or or where you're comfortable at and then you can challenge it again and find that space that you feel is for you um i think you, you speak about we've spoken about process quite a bit over this conversation but um what like what, what what where's your kickstart point how do you get into the zone how do you like what are, for you as an artist do you do you have a space that you go to what is your environment like how i have when we moved into this house it was a shelf when we bought it and it was a it was a bedroom downstairs that i turned it into my man cave you know with my big telly so i could watch the sports and that and that and I furnished it very nicely. And we're, both of us are kind of, believe it or not, are, are kind of neat freaks, particularly Annabelle likes to everything. I said, look, this is my room. Boom. So if you saw it now, Aaron, um, it's an absolute, the black hole of Calcutta wouldn't get a look at. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I'm an incredibly, I'm an incredibly messy uh, painter. I, I just don't have the patience. I'm a very impatient person. I don't have the patience. I want to get you know, the, the, the paint out and, onto the canvas and there's paint everywhere mm -hmm. but I'm just in the process thankfully uh, I'm about to buy a shed basically uh -huh. hopefully about 10 by 12 should be big enough for me um, I'm going to put it out the back and put everything out there and I can Francis Bacon's um, studio it'll, it'll be exactly the same without the champagne without the champagne without the champagne <laughs> you're going to give and give him a run for his money yeah and again okay, annabelle we can get the room back then exactly it's yeah. a small space a small room it's uh but it's fine you but unfortunately it's got all the ordinary furniture in there uh which is, is paint and, and uh, but every three weeks i go in and i clear it all out and uh try and get it back to normal then a week later it's back when it's clean, do you find it? Are you more reluctant to go in there? Uh, uh, yeah, for a few days, I am actually. I am. I cleaned it now last week from top to bottom. And then I had an idea for something I wanted to work on. And within a day, it was in place. And I was furious. You know, but look, that's, that's what it is. That's the space I have at the moment. It's not a good space for painting because um, the light in there is bad. Yeah. And, um, it always comes back to light. Always. So I can't, I, I, I genuinely cannot paint in there after sort of two, three o'clock in, in the afternoon. Yeah. Just kind of, do you like to work at night? Uh, no. Well, do you know what? It's, it's, I, I, I've been one of these people all my life. You know, you, you finish at five, six o'clock, mm -hmm. go home, in the winter, the fire is on, you watch telly, you read a book, whatever you do. Yeah. Um, no work. But I find I'm not good in the mornings. Uh, I, I'm really croggy in the mornings. But I do find that, like recently I went in early for me, like nine o'clock, and I didn't come out until about two o'clock in the afternoon. And that was very unusual for me. But once the I go in, zones. yeah, you know, you know, but the zone, you know, I'm beginning to think that I'm over painting. Because I've been inspired a lot in the last three months in particular. And I think with the exhibition I had in Kilkee, I had to produce some paintings. Mm. So I kind of got in the zone. But then I'm trying to stop myself painting. I mean, that sounds really odd, but I'm trying to, I, I like to do something every day, but I don't want to spend two, three, four, five hours in there every day. Yeah. Because I think actually you get stale. Yeah, I, well, I think it's a case that you get into a habit and it's you're creating for the sake of creating. But it's if stuff if stuff is coming out, if if you feel that the energy is there and there is work being produced, then it, it may be a case that you're not doing a lot of editing um, or stepping back and analyzing what's there and just seeing, OK, question, is this working? Is this doing what I'm trying to get it to do? You're absolutely right. You know, you're absolutely right. And that's one of the lessons I've learned certainly in the last two years, I would say, is that I, I always had a need because of my impatience to finish it, start a painting and finish it. Mm. Can't do it. In the, one, in the one sitting? Well, in the one day or one, sorry, yeah, maybe over a course of a couple of days. Even. Yeah. But what I do now, I have, I, I start four paintings, mm. generally speaking. Mm. Uh, could be different sizes, could be the same size. I start four, and after a couple of hours, I put one down, and it could be sitting there for weeks. Yeah, and then I come back to it. 
But in which case, and it's a much better way. The image always finishes up better. But it what happens there is that it, it that means that painting is not going to get tired because you're constantly thinking about it and you're working on something else. But then you look back at it and you see, ah, actually, do you know what? If I put that in there, yes, that could work. Whereas if you say, no, I have to do this painting and finish this painting to the end, then and not think about anything else, then there is more possibility of you stagnating at some point and not getting it to the place. There is. And also what happens in in my in my case is the painting gets. What I think this is where you say dirty, dirty, because the paint I paint with oil is mostly. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'm trying to put in a line and I'm running over paint that's not dry. So it's not layered Mm -hmm. and colors change obviously yeah and it becomes a dirty painting Mm -hmm. so if i leave if i do a piece of it and leave it dry and then layer on top of that Mm -hmm. it's a the colors are better anyway Uh, they're crisper and and it's more satisfying it's very uh, i can't tell you the number of paintings i absolutely destroy by saying i'll just put white in there and you know, the, uh, putting it on top of something and it's just gone. Oh, crap. <laughs> I also, by the way, I can't tell you the number of paintings I've done that it's the fourth painting I painted on that canvas. I've literally... That's, but like sometimes that's great because it means the colors underneath be, be, uh, it's like it's the, the beginning light source for the image. And so you're almost trying to to work with something that's already there and make it of something else. So your that restriction is making you go to a different place, and you kind of want to go completely against what's there already, but using whatever light you established in the previous painting. And yeah. also, what it does, is I normally uh, prime paintings with the acrylic, hmm. and I have in the past done acrylic paintings that I've layered the acrylic on, and then decided no, I'm going to just wash it all out, so it leaves a texture on the painting. Yeah. which I love. Mm. But that I always, really that always that forms a nice structure for me when I do that. That always yeah. forms. It's like it's almost structuring the, yeah. the, 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 um, the architecture of the piece. Yeah, absolutely right. I really, I really like that. In fact, I think I'm doing kind of a series about the, the seascapes-ish, mm. if, I, if I can describe it, of Kilkee in, in West Clare. It's just an image that's been in my my life for, for 66 years. Mm. Um, and it's very interesting. I'm doing four of them. The colors are dramatically different, but one of them, I did exactly that. I, I layered some um, acrylic on and I painted it out, just covered it again, primed it again, but it's left a beautiful structure on the painting. Mm. It's left a lovely ripple on the, you know, the, the, the dried acrylic. It's left a wonderful structure. I, I really like, I, hate, I don't like flat painting. Yeah, yeah, but I mean that's again it's it, it that's per- personal preference and how you how you engage with things. But I think that's that's it's it's great how yeah. how um free you seem to be now with your process and where you're bringing things, and it's really exciting to see what's going to come up next and what you're going to share with us. I think that's uh, we'll all be kind of keeping our eyes glued. Um, but no, it's it's been it's been really great talking with you, Paul. Um, I feel we've covered a lot of ground and we see where where you're going and we see what's in your head and how you're working at the moment. And I think it's really exciting um, because it's great to see somebody who hasn't maybe been involved in their art practice for such a chunk of their lives and to come back to it and say, actually, do you know what? I can go back to this. I can do this now. And I, I have the time and the space to be able to apply yourself to it. Uh, and it's a real testament uh, to you. T- for, for well, I, I can honestly say coming back to it has changed my life dramatically. Mm-hmm. And it's very interesting. Even family members said, oh, I did, or friends, I didn't know you did that. I didn't know you, you know. And they look and say, oh, gosh, that's interesting. Yeah. Mind you, they look at some of them and say, oh, I knew he was mad. Yeah. yeah. We're all a bit mad. But you're we're, all all a bit mad. mad. We're, we're all that better for it, though, I think. Paul. Oh, absolutely. You know, I don't I, think, do you know what it is, Eamon? I don't think take my life so seriously anymore. Yeah. I lied for a long, long time. Uh, and it cost me with mental health problems and even physically. It was all about, you know, business and doing deals and bringing up kids and mortgages and you know, the, all the all the stuff. And yeah. um, I mean, a hugely 
thankful place now at the moment, you know, where I don't have any of those constraints. Mm -hmm. I feel painting has definitely, and I would advise anyone, I hate when people say, I can't paint. Yeah, me too. Paint. Just get out a, a piece of paper and do something with it. I am 100% on the same page. It's, uh, excuse the pun, but yes, absolutely. Um, there's no reason why you can't at all. Yeah. I think we should leave it at that, Paul, because it's been, it's been great. A pleasure. And I think we've learned an awful lot about you. And I'm looking forward to sharing the new works that you have for us um, in your feature month um, across our social channels and on our website. And I'm looking forward to sharing this podcast with everybody. I think it's it's um, a really great insight to somebody who has come a really cool journey along um, and has an awful lot of life experience put into their artworks. And I think that's very prevalent in your artworks and something that I think people will really appreciate. Um, and also, um, we're looking forward to selling your artworks as well. So don't don't forget that they are all for sale on our collective website at www.newitcollective.com. Um, and be sure to share this with your friends and family and spread the news about the collective, spread the news about Paul's work and Paul's practice. And we're excited to share lots of info about him in the coming few weeks. So thank you once again, Paul. And um, thank you, Eamon, for everything you do. No problem. And we're very happy to support practicing artists like yourself and to, to support the living, not the dead. Lads. Don't be don't be buying all the fancy paintings from the dead people. We want to make these um, these practicing professional artists continue to make work. Uh, so thank you. And everyone else, stay creative. Tune in. I'm Eamon Shannon and you've been listening to the New Collective Podcast.